Jeremy. I'm Nam Life, and today we're making Hot Pot. We love Hot Pot because it's super easy to prep and clean up, and everyone does their own cooking, so it's really easy for everyone. So the easiest way to start your Hot Pot base is to start with one of these Hot Pot broths, uh, which you can buy at an Asian grocery store. They have a bunch of different flavors. The most popular brands are Hai Lao and Little Sheep but you can get like spicy or clear or more traditional tomato based. But we're rocking with mala today for a little bit of a traditional spicy cake. Or if you want to have more control over the flavor and be a bit healthier, you can actually make your broth from scratch. So today we're going to show you how to do that with some ingredients that you most likely have at home and then a few that you may not. But if you do, you can add them into the broth for extra flavor. All right, so step one in getting your broth started is to fill up your hot pot about three-fourths of the way with water, and it'll be a lot faster to heat it up on the stove before you bring it out to your burner. All right, so once the water in the hot pot is boiling, then you can transfer it over to your burner. All right, so to run through some of the ingredients that you're probably gonna have at home to add into the broth, first we have soy sauce, low sodium, Next, we have sesame oil, some Shaoxing wine, scallion, garlic, ginger, white onion, and finish that off with some white pepper powder. And then for the ingredients that you may not have around, but if you do add them in for extra depth of flavor, we're gonna start with some fish sauce, some chili bean sauce, some bullhead brand barbecue sauce, Chinese cinnamon, dried shiitake mushroom, and star anise. There you go. For a full list of the ingredients for the homemade hot pot broth, check out the description below. And for the other side, we're going to do the instant mix, so all you need to do is plop that in there. So for the ingredients that you can find at any grocery store to add to your hot pot are mushrooms. We love enoki mushrooms, but any mushroom of your choice will do. Dumplings, frozen dumplings are great. You can also use homemade ones to add to your hot pot. You can add shrimp or any shellfish. And vegetables, we like to add bok choy and apple <laughs> And you can add your choice of noodles into your hot pot. We like to use vermicelli just because it adds less starchiness to the broth since you're cooking the noodles directly into the hot pot. And these next items you'll need to go to an Asian grocery store for, but they're key for a traditional hot pot experience. Thinly cut lamb or beef. Fish anything, fish ball, fish cake, fish tofu, all delicious. Fermented bean curd skins. And nianga or rice cakes. Finally, we're gonna make a sauce that you can dip all your hot pot items into. And again, we're gonna show to make the base with items that you probably have in your house and then some that you might not. So like we mentioned earlier, the full ingredients list for the sauce is below in the description. But the nice thing about the sauce is, even though we gave you the recommendation, you can play around with the different measurements of each ingredient, depending on how savory or spicy you want it. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to add in water, soy sauce, sesame oil, minced garlic, minced ginger, and then for the ingredients that you may not have, but be awesome if you do, some Bullhead brand barbecue sauce, and then some of Aunt June's chili oil. You can check out our blog or our Instagram page or even YouTube to get the recipe for this. All right, so now all your ingredients are added. You want to cook it on medium to high heat until it starts to bubble in, and that's when you add your cornstarch in to thicken things up. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to cook the sauce on medium-high until it starts to bubble, and you're gonna to wanna to just reduce it a little bit in here, making sure that it's not burning. So what the cornstarch is gonna do is gonna thicken up the sauce so that when you dip your hot pot items in, it's gonna to cling to the meat or vegetables or noodles a lot better. Um, so once you have the cornstarch in, just let it simmer and reduce on medium for about another minute or so, and just stirring occasionally. 
So after the sauce has a nice thick consistency after you've been stirring it, then you want to take it off the heat and pour it into a bowl for dipping later. Right before eating, I like to mix a little bit of sauce with some of the hot pot broth right in my bowl and then just use that for dipping as I'm pulling things out of the, the soup. Alright, now everything's prepared, it's time to eat. So my favorite thing to put in first is the meat because it adds another umami flavor to the broth. And I like to add all the things I want to eat first. <laughs> So I like to add the fish tofu, niang dao, and noodles. So the cool thing about hot pot is that you can cook the way you want, so you get to eat exactly what you want when you want it. So let's get started. Mm. Yeah, everything's so hot and fresh right out the, the broth. Mm. And what I love about hot pot is you can do this in rounds. Like your family always does round one and then we drink and like sing, maybe like some karaoke. Yeah. And then rest, and then round two, hot pot. Yeah, it's a marathon kind of night when we hot pot. Four to six hours, a few bottles of, you know, any... Uh, <laughs> Some uh, wine. Royale. I remember my dad hadn't had hot pot for 25 years before he had it again at your place for Thanksgiving, and he was so excited. So now every year he always has to do hot pot for Thanksgiving, which we always do. Seems like he really enjoyed himself. Oh yeah, because he drank Baijo that night. Yeah, he finished the whole glass in one sip. He takes the gambe really seriously. Really seriously. So one cool thing is, as you continue to cook different items, it really like comes in a kaleidoscope of flavors, and by the end, the, the taste of the broth is completely different. It's a lot more savory and dense, and there's like a depth of flavor there. And a lot of the fat from the meat too cooks into it. So sometimes we'll even use it this like the next day. Yeah. So for things like the shellfish, you're gonna to want to cook it for you know a minute or two in there until it gets a nice uh, pink color. And then with your thin sliced meat, those cook really quickly. So you can just kind of toss them in here, swish them around a little bit for you know nine, ten seconds, and it's pretty much cooked through. That's the beauty of having it thin sliced. Done. So for the noodles, you'll only need to cook it for a few minutes. You can just let it sit in the hot broth and cook. And if you start to run low on broth, you can actually just add some more water into your stock to help get that back up. So doing a hot pot gathering is actually pretty economical. So for everything that you see here today, it's about $60, $70. And in the past, we've even had parties with about 15, 16 people, um, and it you know, only ran us about $125 to feed everyone. So definitely a good value. It's also really easy for people to do as a potluck. Like when we did that, a lot of people just brought like another meat dish or another veg or like fish tofu. It's super easy for people to just like bring a dish and we can all combine it into the hot pot versus having to like heat up various things like we mm -hmm. might have to for like another type of potluck. Yeah, absolutely. All right, y'all, we got a lot of stuff to eat through, so we're gonna get started on that. But if there's any items that you love to hot pot with that we didn't cover here today, drop it in the comments and we'll make sure to cook it for our next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow, subscribe, and click that like button. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. Peace.